What's up guys, V here. And in today's video, I wanna show you how to install the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120 SE ARGB. And in this video, I'm gonna be installing it on a AM5 AMD motherboard. Now, I will talk a little bit about the brackets and stuff for Intel as well, but the installation for the most part is the same on AMD and Intel. This installation will be the same between the RGB and the non-RGB models. The only difference is these fans have an extra cable that I will show you how to install. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, chances are you're probably building a PC from scratch, which means you won't have to clean the CPU off like I will. But if you're replacing an old cooler, you're gonna have to clean the CPU paste off. So I'm just gonna use 91% alcohol and a paper towel. First, I take the dry paper towel, try to wipe off as much as I can. And now I'm just gonna wipe it with the uh, alcohol. Since every cooler is so different on removal process, I'm not gonna go into detail. The only thing I can recommend is warm up your CPU a little bit before the removal process. You can run the PC 30 seconds or so to soften that old thermal paste so it'll pop right out. Sometimes you gotta give it a little wiggle while you're pulling it out. And if it still doesn't go, make sure the screws are fully loosened up. Now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at the brackets we're gonna pick what we need for our motherboard so as mentioned i'm gonna be installing this on an amd motherboard and luckily everything is labeled so these red ones are am4 slash am5 this is for intel 1700 motherboards and these black ones are for 1100 slash 1200 motherboards these don't come with their own screws so you would use the screws out of the blue ones if you had 1200 motherboard now the other thing intel requires which AMD does not because AMD motherboards already come with a backplate, are these backplates. They are labeled as you can see there. You would use the backplate that you need. And there's some little adhesive, just peel the adhesive strips off. And then if this were an Intel motherboard, there would be four holes in the corners that would match up to this bracket. So you would just paste that back there just like that. AM4 doesn't attach like this, so it you would have to hold it in place. And then as far as these brackets, these are for Intel, these longer ones, and the shorter ones are AM4 slash AM5, although they don't say AM5 on them. And then these little metal brackets are actually for your fans. The way you would install these is you take the little ends and you slip them inside of the fans, uh, holes just like that, and you would put one on the other side as well. And then when you go to install these, make sure the cables are not behind and set this down just like this and you would pull this until it snaps on these little edges right here and of course you would do the same thing on the other side and uh, to remove them you would just pull this back like you see here it pivots and you can remove it so the only tip is make sure these cables don't get pinched somewhere back here because these fins can potentially cut them so I'm not gonna put these brackets on just yet because I want to see how I'm gonna be mounting this once you figure out how you're gonna put the cooler in that's when you figure out where these brackets go because of course you want to make sure you're cable managing properly without having having cables you know sticking out the top like that now one last thing for AMD users AM4 and AM5 motherboards typically come with these little brackets installed and they have two screws per bracket for this installation you will have to remove these now once you remove these go ahead and find a ziploc bag put the screws in place these inside of the ziploc bag and keep them because some coolers believe it or not still use these brackets and they're always good to have otherwise you're gonna spend like five dollars on Amazon if you ever need to buy these so keep that in mind now let's go ahead and get into the actual installation we're gonna need to uh, grab our screws and these little spacer things am5 for me and then of course like I said if you have Intel you're gonna use blue ones with these screws or if you're gonna use these black ones with these screws here then I'm gonna grab my designated brackets the way you're gonna mount these is the curve goes towards the uh into the cpu and again on the bottom you would place it like a frowny face with intel obviously the spacing is different so you're just going to put one on top and then one on bottom these basically snap on those little screw holes pretty easily so you can place them on on the back plate like that and then for the screws i think i'm just going to do one at a time and now you can get that second one in now just tighten them up doesn't have to be too hard just enough now repeat that process on the bottom so we're just going to put these in 
and those are good to go. Now let's go ahead and get our thermal paste. All you really need is a pea-sized dot right in the center. You can also use a little spatula to spread it out. Not a big deal. Once you tighten this down, you'll be good to go. Now, peel this off. Now, again, you can make sure that the thermal right logo is facing the correct direction, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't really matter. So I recommend having your screwdriver ready. And this screwdriver is just a tad bit too big, but it fits. So I'm gonna line up the top one. That's screwed on just a little bit, just enough to hold it up. And now we're gonna line up this bottom one. Now on the bottom one, you are gonna have to push a little bit harder because they are spring loaded. So as you're pushing down here, you're tightening that down a little bit. And once it's on, once it catches, then just give it a little shake, make sure it is on. If there's a lot of resistance when you're tightening these, you might wanna back off a little bit and then push again and tighten. What I'm gonna do here, just so it's even pressure on the top and bottom, I tighten this bottom one a little more than the top one. So I'm gonna go back to the top, give it maybe three turns, go back to the bottom a few turns, so on and so forth until this thing is fully tightened. Now they're both almost fully tightened, so I'll just give it one last turn and that's nice and snug. Now that we got the heat sink installed on the CPU, we gotta get the fans on there. So again, just keep in mind where you're gonna put the cables. I want them on the back side, so you know, it's a nicer setup. So that's why I put these brackets where they are now. And the other thing I forgot to mention is the fan splitter. So because we have two fans, obviously we have two fan cables that we have to plug into the same uh, CPU fan header, which I'll show you how to plug in. So as you can see right there, it says CPU fan one. There is a little notch right down here that you would line up with this little rail on the actual cable. So there we go. That is fully installed. And now as you can see, the fan splitter is right here where we can plug in our two fans. And of course, if you didn't get the RGB version of these fans, you won't have this extra cable, which is for the RGBs. I'm gonna go ahead and run it to the back before I install this and hang on to the fan cable itself. Next, you're gonna wanna fit the fan in. All right, so once you got the fan in, you're just gonna wanna stretch this up and over this little notch. Make sure it's fully seated just like that. And now here's a shot from down under so you can see this bottom part going on as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the other fan. Now, as you may be able to see, my ram sticks are in the way of me pushing this flush with this. That is perfectly okay. Just install it a little bit coming out. This one's being a little bit more of a pain, but there we go. Now, since this fan does come out quite a bit, I wanna make sure that my glass still fits. And yes, it does. Thermal right does sell a setup with just one of these heat sinks. Maybe it's a little thicker with one fan. So that's probably the setup I would go with. It really depends if you're going for more of an aesthetic look. Anyways, now let's go ahead and start plugging everything in and we'll be good to go. All right, so plugging the fans in, pretty simple task. We have to plug them into this fan splitter right here that we plugged in earlier. Now, obviously in your own PC, you're gonna wanna cable manage these, you know, stick them back there or something just so it doesn't look bad for this video. Video, I just want to show you how to plug these in. So again, this side of it has a little tab here that you would match up with this little rail here. That's how it's going to look plugged in. Now you do the same with this one. And those are plugged in. Again, just, you know, cable manage these somewhere, make it look nice, and you're good to go. Now, because I did get the RGB model, I'm going to need to figure out where to plug that in. Now, on this motherboard, I have a 5 volt ARGB header right there, as you can see, two pins, one is missing and then another pin. And this is what the cable looks like that we're gonna have to plug in. And this little cable hanging off of it, if you take this little cap off, is another connector. This you would use to daisy chain your other RGB fan onto it. So there's the other RGB cable. You're just gonna match those up and plug it in. Just like that, they even have arrows showing which ones to match up to which. And then, of course, there's another one hanging off of that one where if you take this cap off, you can plug in a couple more RGB devices. If you have a ton of RGB devices, highly recommend an RGB hub. I do have a video showcasing that as well. But for now, we're just gonna plug these two in here. And then this one is gonna be plugged into the motherboard 
where I showed you. So feed this back through here and we just got to match these two, these connectors up. So I got to flip that. And now that one's plugged in as well. Well, there it is, fully installed and working great. Anyways, if you guys found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a comment down below. I will have links to everything down in the description if you're interested. Now, one thing I would like to mention, I have had people ask me what I do with all of my extra parts that I no longer use. I have a bunch of parts sitting around and I've decided I'm going to start a Patreon account. And on the Patreon account, I will be giving away my extra parts that I no longer need. Anything I've used for testing, for making videos just like this, I will go ahead and give away on my Patreon account. Now, I'd like to be fully transparent on my channel, so my Patreon account is going to be a monthly subscription. Haven't fully decided how much that subscription is going to cost just yet, but I'm going to try to make it as affordable as possible. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.